Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, February the 3rd, 2014, and here are our top stories. Tonight. To investigate 9-11, a 9-11 was perpetrated by people within our own government. A 9-11 truther crashes the post-Super Bowl press conference. Meanwhile, details emerge that Seahawks coach Pete Carroll has 9-11 questions of his own. Plus, cold-blooded Arizona cops assassinate a suspect with his hands in the air. All that and more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, it's the day after the Super Bowl, and we've just witnessed what in America looks like the Soviet Union's old May Day parades. We've got all this pageantry, most of it now, about the police state and the military-industrial complex. And over the weekend, agencies like Fox News were just ecstatic about it, reporting breathlessly in admiration about the police state that was coming out. They said, TSA agents demonstrate how dogs can sniff out many types of explosions. Now, these are a couple of dozen canines that they train at $200,000 a piece. So you're talking about about $5 million worth of dogs here, but they've also added 200 screeners at Newark. And of course, these untrusty fans will only be allowed to carry small clutch bags or purses no bigger than six and a half by four and a half inches in a clear plastic bag, about as big as a freezer storage bag. That's the NFL's policy. You know, you gotta keep an eye on all those untrustworthy Americans because if they don't have a uniform, you can't trust them just like in a dictatorship. But they also talk about how they had a 24-hour FBI command center, and they've got radiation detectors, and of course, surveillance cameras everywhere. Now, we had also reported on this last week. Uh, Kurt Nemo had written an article talking about how they were gonna have the flyover of F-16s, $100,000 for that, plus some choppers. Just nothing but a Pentagon PR campaign. But of course, the Pentagon says, oh, that was requested by the NFL. It's very hard to tell where the NFL billionaires stop and the military begins. It's becoming increasingly more and more difficult. But, you know, what could go wrong with all of that security everywhere? Well, we had an inkling on Sunday morning. CBS goes by and takes a look at this vaunted security system, again, doing another dog and pony show, the mainstream media building up the police state for them. And look at what happens. They get a screenshot of the Wi-Fi password for the security center for the Super Bowl. Oops. And guess what? Look at their password. Welcome here. Of course, they, they are a little bit clever about that. They put the threes backwards, but I don't think you even need the NSA to crack that password. Now, the guy who wrote about this on Yahoo Sports says, well, it's a small error, but if that's the biggest snafu of the Super Bowl, then the security staff did their job. Well, it got a lot worse than that because after the game was over, we had a lone wolf journalist drop a video bomb on the Super Bowl. Alex talked to him on the radio show today, and we have an interview with him on the nightly news, so stay tuned. He's going to tell us how he got through that vaunted security system. Now, the most important thing that we take away from this is the same information we should have taken away from the TSA revelations last week. If you remember, Paul Joseph Watson had an article about the blog of a former TSA agent. And one of the things that really stuck out about this, of course, besides the waste of the money and the fact that it's nothing but security theater, is that they were very much aware of John Corbett's video demonstrating that their machines didn't work at all if you have weapons on your side. They're very much aware of John Corbett. They're very much aware of his lawsuit. When he had a lawsuit that resulted in the discovery process, the government posted up the unredacted version as well as the redacted version on pacer.gov where they list all, all lawsuits. And they showed that the TSA's own internal documents admitted that there was no threat against either airports or airplanes. They subsequently put a gag on him, even though they were the ones who posted it. So we know there's no, there's no real security threat, and they know that there's no real security threat, but that doesn't stop them from doing it. As, as Kurt Nemo pointed out today on InfoWars, he said the threat is really an all-encompassing police state and a control grid. You see, the NSA, the TSA, the Homeland Security, all these Viper teams, what they're really doing is terrorizing and robbing American citizens. They're terrorizing us and they're robbing us of our money as well as our rights. You know, one of the prices that we pay for people who don't care about losing their privacy, about losing their liberty, about losing their due process, maybe they care about living in a country where they have a crumbling infrastructure. One of the other things that came out last night, after the game, there was an unconfirmed reports of an explosion in New York. People started tweeting about this on Twitter. 
And what it turned out to be was a gas leak. Now, this is happening fairly regularly in New York. In New York and Los Angeles, the infrastructure is crumbling. It's crumbling everywhere. The bridges are crumbling throughout the nation. But of course, we can spend $5 million on bomb sniffing dogs. That's not even a good buy for dog trainers. You can get dog trainers a lot cheaper than that to, to teach people how to teach dogs how to sniff bombs. We're paying phenomenal amounts of money for this show. It's nothing but a dog and pony show, literally. And we're also losing our liberties. Even though these guys are Keystone cops, that doesn't mean that they're not dangerous. Look at this story out of Arizona. This is where the police state heads. They're not only robbing us of our money, they're not only robbing us of our liberty, they're killing people and getting away with it. They know they can do it. They know there's gonna be no consequences. It's getting more and more dangerous for everyone on the streets. In this video, we have a man who as the Daily Sheeple points out for absolutely no reason other than because they could, cops in Pinal County, Arizona, executed a suspect who was standing there, not near any officer, with his hands in the air, offering no threat whatsoever, and without trial, judge, or jury, they simply assassinated the man as his family looked on in horror. This is disgusting. If you see this, this is the price that we really pay for this security state for this police state, for this military industrial complex that has gone crazy. And how many people do we see killed in the United States? There's a story that we also had on InfoWars today from allgov.com, and they asked that question, they said, why should that kind of a question require any detective work at all? Because it's very difficult to find that answer. It's that there's currently no national statistics on how many people are shot by the police each year. Frankly, the best that you can do is to write a story about the lack of information. I know because I've tried to find this information in the past myself. There is no reliable information about this. They don't keep statistics on how many people they kill. Now, just before the Super Bowl, a lot of alternative media was also asking questions about what was going to happen. And Breitbart asked why nobody was interested that the Seahawks coach might be a truther before the Super Bowl. The reason they were asking that was because six months ago, Deadspin.com picked up an article where they said, late last spring, that would be a year ago approximately, a retired General Peter Chiarelli, who had just finished his term as the Army's Vice Chief of Staff, visited the head coach of the Seattle Seahawks. And the head coach of the Seattle Seahawks had a lot of questions about 9-11. As they report here in particular, Carroll wanted to know whether the attack on the Pentagon had really happened, but he didn't stop there. He ran through the whole 9-11 truther litany. And according to Ricky Ellison, a former NFL linebacker who now runs the Missile Defense Advocacy Alliance, he was the one who introduced Carroll to the former general. He said, every 9-11 conspiracy theory you can think of, Pete asked about it. And apparently the meeting ended not on very good terms. But nobody asked about that in the aftermath of the Super Bowl leading up to it or even after Matthew Mills dropped the video bomb. Don't want to talk about that, do they? What they want are mindless demonstrations from Super Bowl fans like we saw in Seattle in the wake of the win. Paul Joseph Watson points out the decadence of Seahawk fans running riot after a Super Bowl victory. He says, in another shameful reminder of Americans who care more about sports than the future of their own country, Seattle Seahawk fans reacted to their team's victory by behaving like animals, destroying property, lighting fires. Well, unfortunately, that's exactly the kind of person and exactly the kind of reaction that the beer and circuses of the Super Bowl are intended to create. Now, hang on. Right after the break, we're going to talk to Jakari Jackson about how you can get into the Super Bowl without tickets. And then we're also going to talk to Matthew Mills, the lone bomber of the Super Bowl media event. Stay tuned. Symbols are powerful, and the globalists have hijacked the symbols of America. They've turned them into their own symbols. Well, we are restoring the idea of the true republic, not the counterfeit globalist empire, by promoting the icon George Washington and others. That's why we're rolling out on a 100% made in America line of incredible pro-liberty apparel. We are repopularizing liberty. We are helping fellow Americans Americans rediscover what made this country great. We are the spirit of 1776. We are 1776 worldwide. We are all brothers and sisters in arms in the animating contest of liberty in the long march towards humanity's ultimate destiny of freedom.
Visit MadeIn1776.com today and vote with your dollars to promote truly made in America, high quality products and promote the ideals of liberty. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure these sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Well, as you know, if you watch InfoWars or the Alex Jones Radio Show, Jakari Jackson and Josh Owens went to the Super Bowl to report what they saw there. And Jakari is back along with Josh. And we wanted to get your first impressions, Jakari, what it was like to go to the Super Bowl because most of us haven't been to the Super Bowl. What's your quick first impressions? And then we want to talk about the police state that you saw there. Well, it is very much uh, the big entertainment extravaganza. It did not disappoint as far as the cosmetics are concerned, but it also did not disappoint as far as our expectations of the police state. Mm -hmm. uh, we went to New York, uh, the New York, New Jersey area, MetLife Stadium, to talk about the police state measures at the Super Bowl. Uh, 3,000 plus security personnel uh, from various agencies, all in the New York, New Jersey area. You had uh, the Border Patrol flying helicopters around. You had guys with AR-15s in the train stations. Uh, How about that F-16 flyover? Well, that F-16 flyover we missed while we were on the train because uh, we had to go, we had to take the train because they funneled 30,000 people on the train to the MetLife Stadium there. And it was very, uh, I was very much confused why they were forcing people to basically take the train or the bus when they had a pretty much wide open parking lot, Dave. They had police cars sprinkled throughout, but the majority of the parking lot was empty. Well, it's a great dry run for a police a martial law. They had a, a nice dry run to get masses of people in with the trains and buses into a stadium where we know they like to collect people. And then another, how long does it take to get them out? It's a good benchmark. Just like not too long ago, they released uh, some gas in the New York subway so mm -hmm. they could see what effect that was going to have on people. So they like to do these little experiments on their subjects. But, you know, it seems to me that they, they really lost sight of the main thing. You know, when you're at the Super Bowl, you would think that maybe one of the main things they would want to check for would be a ticket. But they didn't check your <laughs> ticket. You know, yeah, and it's yeah. like the police state has lost track also, more importantly, of what the main thing is. That's the Constitution. But but tell us about this whole This complete thing. security theater. And I'll, I'll tell you guys a story. So to get on the train, you had to present your ticket, not have it scanned, not have it really inspected. You just show our ticket right here. And all we did was present it to the guy. You know, he didn't check it. He didn't scan the barcode. We just presented it to his face. He said, oh, your ticket's good. We hop on the train. We go out there. And after we got off the train, from the train into the stadium, we were not asked a single time to present a ticket to anybody. Because I told Josh Owens, our camera guy, I said, Josh, let's see how far we can get into the stadium without having to show a ticket. We got all the way into our seats. Well, you told me before, though, that there were people out, once you yes. showed them that ticket, Good when point. you got to the stadium, people were there trying to buy a ticket. Yes. So they got there without yeah. even flashing it to anybody. So, so somebody else got there, uh, you know, guys out there trying to buy the last minute tickets, right? And to get there, they wanted you to present a ticket, and they didn't want you to drive your personal vehicles. You couldn't even get a permit if you did not have a ticket. So that's even more theater. So we got in without showing a ticket. People made it to the stadium without showing a ticket. And then you have the 9-11 truther yeah. who crashes the press conference. No ticket, no pass, walk straight in, gets his question in. Complete security theater. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just a total fake presentation. It's there to scare people. It's there to impress people. They're going to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's, it's a success, David, because yeah. no, nobody got blown up. You know, there's no shooting, mass shooting. So they're going to take this as a great success.